Hello everyone and welcome to a drawing session. We're gonna have drawing this week since we did watercolor last week. And I wanted to um, show you a way that I fit seeing drawing into my life every day. And <clears throat> a lot of times we do it with pencil here and that's fine. You can choose pencil, you can choose pen, really anything. Um, but I want to do it today with pen, and I'm going to show you the pen I use, um, and then another pen that's really affordable, and also two other um, kinds of pens that you can do seeing drawing with that. Um, it, it's just a different experience to do it with pen because we're not erasing. And what I find, number one, I just love it. I love the look of black ink on paper. But I also um, love the way it, ha it has me slow down even more, right? So a lot of times, um, especially when I've taught this in person, in my drawing classes um, in person, I have people start out with pen because it really does force them to slow down. I think they're so nervous they're going to make a wrong move that it automatically makes them slow down. So we don't want the nervous part, right? Um, because this is this is practice. This is work. This is daily work that we do in order to see the world better. And so it's not, there's no stress. We don't care so much about the end result. It's more about the process and learning, um, well, helping our brain and our hands and our eyes work together in a better way. So I'm going to show you um, <clears throat> the book that I use. This is my traveler's notebook. I've had this for over 10 years. This is way back when it was still made by Midori and not Traveler's Company. And um, you can tell it's well-worn. And I, I absolutely love this. It has traveled with me a lot. <laughs> and not I don't mean far away necessarily, but just in my daily life. And I... I keep different, um, if you're not familiar with Traveler's Notebooks, they work with the with rubber bands and you can slip notebooks in, right? And then when you're done, you slip it out and you put a new one in and you can get all different kinds of, of notebooks for, for Traveler's Notebooks. They come with a little bookmark. I just tied a charm onto mine. Um, they're closed with elastic. I put a charm on mine just because... I don't know, personalizes it, right? So this front notebook um, is actually one that I write in in every day. <clears throat> um, I transcribe a uh, page of the Tao. And this is the third time I've done it. And my hope is that just by reading these beautiful words every day and writing them down that slowly, it, it becomes part of me, right? So that's what that is. And then my other daily practice in here is my seeing drawing practice. And so right now, I, I started a new notebook um, just really recently. Um, before this one, I had the lightweight paper, which is very similar to this. This is actually made by Traveler's Company. But this is a new one they came out with in their B-Sides and Rarities. And I thought it was a limited edition, but I don't think so. They're, they're available almost everywhere. So this is the super lightweight paper from Traveler's Notebook, okay? And I, um, I really, really love it. And I, I want to show you why. So it's not, it's not onion skin paper, but it's very transparent like onion skin paper. I love the way ink looks on this paper. It's delicious to draw on, but most of all, I love how I can see all of the drawings through one another. So here's one, and then I turn the page, and there's another, and you can still see the story, right? The story continues, so every day. And you can see I choose very simple subjects so that they don't take me more than 10 or 15 minutes usually. Um, and sometimes even less. I mean, it just depends. <clears throat> but this is so delightful to use that I feel like I spend longer um, than I usually do, right? So you can see what's coming and what's leaving and what's present. And I really love that. And it also sort of um, 
has me thinking about composition and where I put things on the page, which is always a good thing to practice, right? So I'm kind of doing it so things show through each other. Every now and then I put um, watercolor on here. Watercolor is beautiful on this paper. Um, it gives it a nice crinkle. It's really, it's really lovely. And I think we'll do that today. We'll put a little watercolor on it. But you see how there's a story here, right? It's, there's a, it, it's just really beautiful. That's a hagstone. Um, here's a little watercolor with a seashell. Here's a rune on a stone. Here's some watercolor with um, a piece of dried um, plant that I actually picked in front of my son's house in Dublin and brought it home in a book. <laughs> so we've got a nice page here. <laughs> and sometimes I do seeing drawing in my other sketchbook too. So I go back and forth. But this one, I, I re in, when I do pencil, I use my other one. But this is for ink. So I have this. This is a um, pencil board made for the Traveler's Notebook. It's really nice because if you're actually writing, it's a, it's a line guide. But for, for this, I use it. Um, all right, I gotta find my, I don't know where my clip is, so I'll use this. Um, <clears throat> to keep the paper flat if I want to put um, watercolor down, right? And so you can just clip it and you don't need a bunch of paper but just if you clip it somewhere it keeps the paper flat until the watercolor dries all right so let me go get some water I wasn't planning on doing watercolor but let's do that first um, so I can show you and I've showed you on my other notebook how I do this I keep it very simple right um, so let's do that and then I'll be back okay so let's grab some paint um, hmm. I think, I think I'll use my deep, deep light paints today. This is just a curated collection of them that I love and um, just sort of the palette I'm using right now. So I'll do that and just a simple paintbrush, something to spread the paint easily, it doesn't have to be anything perfect. Now I'm looking at this and I notice, right, I just put watercolor here, so it's kind of soon. Um, usually I skip a couple pages, but I'm going to do it anyways, and I'm going to work on, um, so if I turn this, where would watercolor be interesting? What about this way, right? <clears throat> so actually, if I go here, if I had the watercolor that way, I think about it. It gives me practice with composition. You know what? I'm going to do it this way. So it's kind of crossing over. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I start <clears throat> with a little color and I, I don't really think about the color. I just, I just pick a color, you know? Um, <clears throat> and... <clears throat> You don't want to use too much water because it'll it just it'll take a long time to dry. And you do you, and you'll notice how how it definitely um, crinkles the paper and it's it's really lovely. There's it's just lovely. So again, I keep it fairly simple. I like to use white to move my edges out, or just water. But white gives it a special texture, and then I might soften this edge a little. And that's really enough. Now, um, sometimes I like to use a little something extra. I love my magic pencil and sometimes I'll just run it just a little bit on the edge. And sometimes I like to put a piece of 
my god. Just cut on my thing right now. I enjoy it. Oh, wrong. I, I like to use glue because otherwise they do tend to fall off. So I'll pick a spot for it. Um... reason. There it goes. This is blue, but then it dries clear, so. And I think I'll, I'll do um, gray. Just a little bit. Okay, so I keep it really simple. And I don't know, but it just brings me a lot of joy. So I'm going to let this dry, and then we'll come back, and I'm going to talk about the pens that I like and today's subject. All right? Okay, so this is basically dry. It might be a little moist here, but this part's dry. So I remove the pencil board before I draw. Um, I use it for watercolor only. I really like to feel the cushion of the paper underneath. And quite honestly, I usually just leave it in the book like this. However, um, for today, I'm going to take it out just because it will probably work best. So, and I can show you, how, it's just so easy. You just remove it like this and there you go. Um, and this is just a folder that I keep in the back. Just a folder. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to talk a little bit about pens and one of the wonderful things about Traveler's Notebook Paper is that not watercolor, not ink, nothing goes through. I mean you can see it, but it doesn't bleed through. So that's a really, a really good thing because there's some, some sketchbook papers that ink will bleed through to the other side and ghost, it not only ghosts, but it will stay in the next page, right? Um, and this paper does not do that. So I'm not going to write in here, but I'm going to show you the, pen, the different pens that I like. Um, and I'll just do it. Let's see. I have a little piece of sketchbook paper I can use. I'll use on this Cosmo. <laughs> okay. So I've got a few pens that I use. And one that I recently got that I use almost all the time when I do pen and ink. So every now and then I use a dip pen, but not that often for this, because it usually, I just, I don't have much time. So I don't, I don't want to deal with all of that. I just want to grab my pen and sit down and do it, you know? So sometimes when I, when I want to be a little bit more expressive and really practice um, my hand control, I will use a Pentel brush pen. I have three, three, three brush pens that I, that I like. So what's wonderful about this, it is permanent ink if you ever want to um, use watercolor with it on top of it after you've drawn something. But it's a brush pen and it, it really does help you um, gain better control of your hand and the hand pressure you use when you draw. Because if you have really good control, you can get beautiful, beautiful fine lines, very expressive lines that can go very thick and then very fine again. This is a beautiful way to draw. And I have other videos about brush pens, and so I highly recommend checking those out. I have one in black. These are both waterproof, so um, and they're wonderful. And this is um, sepia. So if I ever want to use sepia ink, and sometimes I use them together. Um, so that's black and brown. <clears throat> and then I have this one. This is by Kurataki. This is a sable hair brush pen. <clears throat> and... This is not, <clears throat> excuse me, not waterproof. So it's incredibly responsive, um, <clears throat> but so is the Pentel, to be honest with you. <clears throat> but the ink is not waterproof, and so I tend to use this one if I wanna do ink and wash. And so what that means is I get my drawing done, let it dry, you know, because <clears throat> you don't wanna do it when it's totally wet. <coughs> Because then, if you do it when it's totally wet, um, 
the ink's just gonna disappear, right? But if I let it dry and then I use a wet brush on it, um, I get beautiful washes, gray washes. So brush pens I use if I wanna be a little bit more expressive or I really wanna practice my hand control, which I had to do quite a lot of to, to get sensitivity to pressure back when I lost feeling in these fingers. So brush pens, really, really, really great. And then the most common pen I use is a Micron pen, and uh, until now. So I use between a 003 and a 005, and, and these give very even lines. And the nice thing is, if I use a really light pressure, I can get a little bit of a sketchy look, or if I, um, especially with the 003, um, but the, the, the line variation is very consistent. So it has a, a really different look than with a brush pen where my line is always varying, right? Even when I'm trying to be really careful, the line has variation. So it's just a more, it's a precision tool and I really do love it. Um, this is what I would use most often. Let me see if I have a sketchbook nearby and I'll show you an example. Um, this is my summer sketchbook. <laughs> So, for instance, um, that's Micron pen, right? Really, really fine, um, very even. Um, you can, This is a 003, and then I can go darker with a 005, but I can get, and I have some in gray also, gray and brown. So it, it's just a really different um, feel and very precise, right? And that is, and, and I love it. I love it for, um, for that. And I, I typically use an, and I would call this like a needle, a needle nose pen, right? And a, a very, very fine pen. Okay, so that's my crown. Now, I recently bought a fountain pen to replace my micron pens. And so it's not disposable. I just re keep refilling it with ink. Um, this pen is by Franklin Kristoff, and the reason I chose this brand is because they you don't have to get a custom grind on your nib to get a needle point nib. They sell them. Um, it is a custom nib by a Japanese um, nib master, so they take their extra fine nib and they turn it into, a. it's called a, a needle point nib. And so if you look, if I draw next to this one, um, it's just as fine as a 005, right? I haven't used it in a couple days and it may not work well on this paper. Oh no, it's fine. Um, one thing, and I can go a little bit firmer and I get a thicker line, right? And I can go up on its tippy toe and get a finer line or upside down and go even finer. Now, one thing I have noticed about their nibs and I was just talking about this to a friend the other day, um, Honestly, they, they, they have some hard starts every now and then. And they only have this trouble with this size nib. Um, I don't know, it's just, it's a problem. But if I, see how fine though? I mean, for a fountain pen, that's pretty great, right? It, it's like using a micron pen, but it has more expression to it. So if I'm drawing, like here, if I draw next to this, and plus the ink is darker because I can choose the ink I want. And this is waterproof black ink. So it's just more expressive. Do you see that? It has, um, it has the capability of being really fine and a little bit thicker. And so it just looks more expressive when you use it. So that's why I love this one. I, Every single one of their pen models, this one's called Snow, um, you can get with a custom nib. Um, but I'm really happy with it. The hard starts are a problem every now and then, but once I get drawing, I don't notice it anymore. And, and I think I am going to write to them because my friend wrote to them and they basically told her how to troubleshoot the nib. And in my mind, when you buy a pen, no matter how much it costs, this is not a grossly expensive pen, but it's not also not a you know a five dollar pen. So 
I think even if you buy a $5 pen, it should work. I mean, that's just my opinion. I, I don't usually have problems with fountain pens. So I can show you if I put a little water on here, you can see that I get a wash, right? <clears throat> and then on these, if I put water, nothing happens. So that's the difference between the Kurataki and, um, and the Pentel. But if I use the Kurataki <clears throat> and if I, um, if I put ink down, if I put water down right away, I can, I can end up losing my original line. If you let it dry, your original line work will remain, but it still will release some wash. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so those are the pens. And if you want to try seeing drawing with a pen, um, my recommendation is to get a brush pen and to get a micron pen. So you have both and you can try. Um, and I think both are really valuable. All right. And then if it's something that you really, really love and you want to invest in a pen, um, I would get a needle, a needle nose pen. <clears throat> I really like to use a fine point for these kinds of drawings. Um, I, I think it's necessary. Okay. So for today's subject, <clears throat> a friend sent me some of the most beautiful teas. I've tried each one of these twice. Um, they are yummy, but more than that, they're just beautiful. And so I thought I would sprinkle some on the page and draw it today. I like this one because it has the little lavender buds and then it has chamomile. This one's more like chai. It's got black peppercorns and, and berries and cinnamon and, and things like that. So this one's also interesting, but I really, really like this one. And so what I'm, I'm going to pick some of the pieces out and just set it down on the paper. And I'm going to draw it. So if I look here... I'm gonna draw it like right in here. So it'll kind of show through there. Isn't that cool? Um, so I'll just put it down here somewhere and then um, and then draw it. There's some lavender. So your, your subjects for scene drawing can be anything, right? <laughs> anything at all. And so I want, here's a clove. That's really cool. So, and, and I suggest that you, here's a smaller clove. I suggest that you, um, I, re, I, I suggest that you keep it simple and keep it small so it doesn't take you very long and therefore you're more apt to do it, right? You're much more apt to do it. So a few more little things and I'll just I'll draw what I wanna draw. Okay. So I am going to use this pen. <clears throat> I don't post it, but you can. It just becomes, I don't know, it's too big. I like the size of this pen. It's really, really comfortable. And so with seeing drawing, most of you probably know, um, I am just drawing what I see and I'm not drawing outlines. I'm, I'm really, um, I'm really just drawing what I see as I go. And I don't, um, I don't need to be fancy. It's just a documentation of something beautiful. Beautiful in my daily life. It can be just about anything. It could be a few pieces of oatmeal. <laughs> you know, when you make your porridge, take a few pieces of oatmeal and put them down on your table. <laughs> I mean, truly. And I always apologize because I'm left-handed and so my hand, if I'm drawing in my natural, I would totally block it. So it's a little bit tricky for me. I have to think about it. But I'm showing you this because 
I want to really emphasize how simple, how simple it can really be. And no matter how simple it is, the benefits are so immense for doing this. I hope that some of you who have made this part of your daily practice will comment on this and talk about the benefits that you have seen. And I think one of the things I know from, from teaching this for so long to people here locally, um, one of the things that I heard over and over and over again was how amazed people were that they could draw beautiful things. They really never thought they could draw. And seeing drawing is a way, a way that people realize that they can, they can draw. It's not out of their reach. So I'm just starting at one end and I'm truly just moving along using stipples and lines and hatching and any kind of marks that I need to make in order to document what I'm seeing. Sorry, you can hear Rick doing his class. <laughs> Tuesdays are our double, double, double days. He's home doing that. And at our studio um, at the Roycroft, we don't have Wi-Fi. And it's a really old stone building, so there's just no, it just doesn't work. <laughs> um, you can't even get like a hotspot in there. So we both have to work from home when we do things online. Sorry about the noise in the background. Hopefully. <clears throat> yeah, so maybe I'll put music on, actually. I'm going to do that. So I also want to address something about um, 
this is fairly far away from me because I'm on camera and I have to stay, I can't put my face right over it because, um, because I'd be in the camera, the camera's away. <laughs> but <clears throat> an interesting thing is that for me personally, when I'm doing seeing drawing, if I, um, If I have trouble seeing because my eyes are so bad, um, I, I hover right over my paper. Or the other thing that I've done, and I talk about this with you guys, is I hold things in my hand, right? So I can lift them up and look. Because seeing drawing, I'm not worried about a single perspective or anything like that. I'm truly only interested in documenting what my eyes are seeing. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> and none of the rest of it matters. So um, let's get move some of this. So what I end up doing, um, and I'm moving stuff around just to make it, um, keep it in this sort of area here. So I really cannot see very well right now. I mean, I, I can see from a distance, right? I can't see every little fine detail. I don't want to make things up, right? I really just want to draw what I see. And so it is absolutely okay to document something exactly the way you see it, even if you don't see it in all of its detail. And so never worry about that. This is not about making a perfect um, drawing, right? It's not. And so you just, you just draw what you see. I, I don't know how to say it any more simply than that. You just draw what you see. And sometimes even, you know, I just stipple because stippling I have pretty good control over. And I can stipple this clove, for instance. And then I can add darkness where I really need it. in an easier way. And it's just easier for me than hatching. There. All right, I'm gonna move some of this. I'm just gonna draw, draw this chamomile, because it's so lovely. I'm gonna move it over here because um, I wanna be able to see it see it kind of. I'm going to move it right here actually. So never worry about, um, about not being able to see everything. If you can, pick it up and hold it in your hand. If you can't, that's okay too. So this, this chamomile bud, if I just put stippling everywhere just to give it some, some tone and then I just go in with more stippling where it's darker, that works really well. <coughs> Sorry. Excuse me. Just put a couple more of the little lavender.
Would someone know that this was tea? Probably not. But it doesn't matter because that's not the point of it. The point is that I've spent this time drawing, noticing how things are, are looking in reality. Listen to him. <laughs> How do you guys get two classes today? All right, I think that's good. So you get an idea, right? Any subject will do. Simple is best. Small is better. Um, because we can finish it, right? Oh, I just really love this. Let me just put this tea back in here. I don't want to ruin I don't want to waste it because it's so delicious. Um, okay. All right. And so that, I'm done. I don't know how long that took. Probably... <laughs> probably just about the same amount of time that it normally takes um and sometimes i'll put the watercolor on set it aside and then later in the day come back to it and sit and do my drawing and i again i don't do watercolor all the time like you know i'll now that i did this demonstration for you i'll probably do um two or three more pages and then do watercolor again so let's see how it looks from behind barely there you barely see it but it's interesting right and then when i turn it I go to the next page. I just love the way it kind of makes us, you know, like this continuation. I just think it's so lovely. All right. So that is my seeing drawing practice with pen and ink. Um, I keep it really simple, really simple. And um, I find materials that bring me joy and, and are... They're invitational, right? Like I, I love this book. I've had it for many years and it's just a part of me and I really enjoy using it. And so it's invitational. It invites me just to come to my practice. Those things are important. So find, find the book, the materials that invite you to sit down and do your work. Um, super important. All right, everybody. Thank you very much. I would love to hear your thoughts. If you are someone who has been doing seeing drawing for a while, I would love to know. Um, in fact, I I usually just keep this pen tucked inside here. That way, if I leave the house and I haven't had time to do it, I just throw this in my bag and I can sit and do it wherever I am. Um, whatever what's whatever's around me. There. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts about your scene drawing practice and what it has brought to you and the differences that you've seen, like the, like, like how it has affected the rest of your creative practice. I would love to hear your thoughts on that in the comments below. Um, I'm going to keep drilling this because it's what I believe in most. It, I believe in this more than anything else that we do here. So, um, this and, and also dandelion lessons, I think, are so important. But but all the other things, that the skills and the techniques and the projects we learn, they are all bettered by this practice. All right? I will never stop. <laughs> I will never stop with the seeing drawing practice. All right, everyone. Thank you so much, and I will see you on Friday with the dandelion lesson. Take care. Mm -hmm.